The question is, what is the government position on the date of the election? Not, not your opinion, not anybody's opinion. Mr. Speaker, I have a right to answer the question the way I want to answer it. Mr. Speaker, uh, unless the Honorable Member want to answer me. Order, order. You, you have put on record a very dangerous statement. Members of the front bench who are led by you in the House have a right to give accurate information to the House, not, not to answer the way they want. How can the government then claim to have any roadmap that has no date on when the elections will be held? How are they planning? Mr. Speaker, I think the Prime Minister should take the business of this House seriously. First, Mr. Speaker, I say that the court made a ruling, and we respect that ruling. And that, Mr. Speaker, is what the President has gone by. Mr. Speaker, should even have added that, Mr. Speaker, that is was also adopted by the Cabinet. So, Mr. Speaker, if you want official government position, that is official government position. With the election date matter dealt with, the question of ethnic mobilization ahead of the forthcoming polls raised even more political dust. I want the Prime Minister to confirm to the nation that he is the father and the architect of ethnic balkanization and mobilization in this country, starting with the region that he comes from 15 years ago. Is it in order for the Honorable Duale, in a bid to ask the Prime Minister a question, to cast as passions on the character and personality of the Prime Minister by saying that is the architect? Order. We merely ask a question, which is entitled to. Order, member for Gwasi. If I were to be an architect of ethnic balkanization, I would never see the floor of this house. I would never be elected, Mr. Speaker, on the basis of the vote from one ethnic community in the constituency that I represent. Mr. Speaker, when others go and assemble in Eldoret and say, we are a Kamatusa or Kamatusi, uh, and that you are our leader, Mr. Speaker. They are beating ethnic drums, Mr. Speaker. The ethnic mobilization row gave way to yet another contentious issue, discipline in the management and membership of political parties. The Prime Minister maintained that political parties should be driven by ideologies and not tribal affiliation. I do not know whether the Prime Minister was listening to himself because the Prime Minister holds the record in this House for having changed parties. He holds the record. He hasn't told the House how he managed to change to all these parties. I think he must be in the eighth party. What, what drove him from one party to another? Was it the policies he was following as he's telling the House? Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Member is saying that I hold the record. I have changed political parties four times because NAC was not a political party as such, we were only an LDP. The Speaker, KANU, uh, uh, ODM, U, e, U, e, UDM, and URP are four. He himself, Mr. Speaker, has changed parties four times like myself. <laughs> The climax of the political showdown was the Kolomani MP Dr. Boni Halwale's cheeky attempt to question the authenticity of Prime Minister Raila Odinga's latest honorary degree. Mr. Speaker, can the Prime Minister tell us what instrument the government is going to put in place to ensure that some of these certificates, diplomas, degrees that people are scrambling for, some which will obviously be fake, will receive sufficient authentication so that the people with fake documents do not sneak into leadership in the country. Mr. Speaker, well, I don't know where the Honorable Member is coming from, but Mr. Speaker, I was recently awarded a honorary doctorate degree by the Florida uh, Agricultural and Agricultural University. But I'm also a holder of a Master of Science degree in Mechanical Engineering. The showdown was yet another reminder to Kenyans 
of the high voltage politics expected as the race to succeed President Mwai Kibaki gathers momentum. Francis Gashori, Citizen Live at 9.